Good evening, my beautiful brothers and sisters. I hope you all are enjoying this beautiful day. I could not believe how hot it was out today. I did not go out, but Sherm was out. And even Cindy like, told me, she's like, it's like 90 degrees out there. And my weather thing on um, the computer somehow, for some reason, even though I changed it a dozen times, is set for Colton, Ohio, instead of MacArthur. I do not know why. But anyway, the weather in Colton, it said it was 86 degrees. So I'm like, my gosh, it is about 90 degrees out there. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we got our air conditioner on. But it's hard for me to breathe when in this heat like that. But I got two blankets on, too, so because the air conditioner gets it so cold in here. But it feels good at the same time. But i got to have my blankie. And, of course, Dottie's laying on it, too. And Sherm, he's just, I don't know. He's running around doing something. Actually, he's in the bathroom, but I didn't want to say that. But Okay. Let's do today's Bible reading. And I forgot to tell you guys yesterday, um, this week we're reading from the Contemporary English Version. And we're going to begin with John 7, 31 through 53. A lot of people in the crowd put their faith in him and said, When the Messiah comes, he surely won't perform more miracles than this man has done. When the Pharisees heard the crowd arguing about Jesus, they got together with the chief priests and sent some temple police to arrest him. But Jesus told them, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I will return to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you won't find me. You cannot go where I am going. The Jewish leaders asked each other, Where can he go to keep us from finding him? Is he going to some foreign country where our people live? Is he going there to teach the Greeks? What did he mean by saying that we will look for him but won't find him? Why can't we go where he is going? On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, If you are thirsty, come to me and drink. Have faith in me and you will have life-giving water flowing deep from inside you, just as the scriptures say. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, who would be given to everyone that had faith in him. The Spirit had not yet been given to anyone since Jesus had not yet been given his glory in full. When the crowd heard Jesus say this, some of them said, He must be the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. Others even said, Can the Messiah come from Galilee? The scriptures say that the Messiah will come from the family of King David. Doesn't this mean that he will be born in David's hometown of Bethlehem? The people started taking sides against each other because of Jesus. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple police returned to the chief priests and Pharisees, they were asked, Why didn't you bring Jesus here? They answered, No one has ever spoken like that man. The Pharisees said to them, Have you also been fooled? Not one of the chief priests or the Pharisees has faith in him, and these people who don't know the law are under God's curse anyway. Nicodemus was there at the time. He was a member of the council and was at the same one who had earlier come to see Jesus. He said, Our law doesn't let us condemn people before we hear what they have to say. We cannot judge them before we know what they have done. Then they said, Nicodemus, you must be from Galilee. Read the scriptures and you will find that no prophet is to come from Galilee. Everyone else went home. And that's where it stops today with John 7, 31 through 53. 
now we're going to read Psalm 109, a Psalm of David for the music leader. I praise you, God. Don't keep silent. Destructive and deceitful lies are told about me, and hateful things are said for no reason. I had pity and prayed for my enemies, but their words to me were harsh and cruel. For being friendly and kind, they paid me back with meanness and hatred. My enemy said, find some worthless fools to accuse him of a crime. Try him and find him guilty. Consider his prayers a lie. Cut his life short and let someone else have his job. Make orphans of his children and a widow of his wife. Make his children beg for food and live in the slums. Let the people he owes take everything he owns. Give it all to strangers. Don't let anyone be kind to him or have pity on the children he leaves behind. Bring an end to his family and from, no and from now on let him be a forgotten man. Don't let the Lord forgive the sins of his parents and his ancestors. Don't let the Lord forget the sins of his family or let anyone remember his family ever lived. He was so cruel to the poor, homeless, and discouraged that they died young. He cursed others. Now place a curse on him. He never wished others well, wished only trouble for him. He cursed others more often than he dressed himself. Let his curses strike him deep, just as water and olive oil soak through our bones. Let his curses surround him, just like the clothes he wears each day. Those are the cruel things my enemies wish for me. Let it all happen to them. Be true to your name, Lord God. Show your great kindness and rescue me. I am poor and helpless, and I have lost all hope. I am fading away like an evening shadow. I am tossed aside like a crawling insect. I have gone without eating until my knees are weak, and my body is bony. When I see my enemies see me, they say cruel things and shake their heads. Please help me, Lord God. Come and save me. Because of your love, let others know that you alone have saved me. I don't care if they curse me as long as you bless me. You will make my enemies fall when they attack. You will make me glad to be your servant. You will cover them with shame just as their bodies are covered with clothes. I will sing praise for your praises and thank you, Lord. When your people meet, you help everyone in need, and you defend them when they are on trial. And that was Psalm 109, a Psalm of David for the music leader. Last but not least for today is Proverbs 15:5 through seven. Don't be a fool and disobey your parents. Be smart, accept correction. Good people become wealthy, but those who are evil will lose what they have. Words of wisdom make good sense. The thoughts of a fool make no sense at all. And that was Proverbs 15, 5 through 7. That was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I love you guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, guys.